I'm going to talk about being lost in Johannesburg and what I discovered in being lost. I was a third year graphic design student based in Port Elizabeth. I had a holiday job at an advertising agency called Headboys. Their offices were in Rivonia, north of Johannesburg. On my first day at work, my aunt dropped me off at the North Taxi Rank. North Taxi Rank is one of the biggest and busiest taxi ranks in the Johannesburg CBD. It was scary and chaotic. There were people everywhere. Queues were long, and I lost my sense of direction. I had to ask for taxis to Rivonia. It was really intimidating. Come to think of it, it is still intimidating even today. After asking a couple of taxi drivers, queue marshals, and fellow commuters, I finally found taxis to Rivonia, and I got to work on time. After my first day at work, I had to take a taxi back to the Johannesburg CBD. At the bus stop, there was an old lady who also worked at Headboys. She was waiting for a taxi. A taxi stopped for us, and we got in. Halfway through the journey, the old lady asked me if I resided in Alexandra Township. Alexandra Township, Alex for short, is one of the oldest townships in Johannesburg. It is nicknamed Gomorrah and is perceived to be a rough neighborhood by some, well, including me at the time. I simply replied the old lady with a yes and a smile. I didn't want her to ask me any further questions. This was my first realization that I had boarded a wrong taxi. <laughs> I was scared and anxious. As we're entering Alex, we passed the Alex taxi rank. It was scary and chaotic as the North taxi rank. I had to ask for taxis that were going to the Johannesburg CBD. On the following day, I told the old lady at work about what really happened. We laughed about it, and she also noted that I had missed the taxi hand signals. Johannesburg commuters use multiple hand signals to stop taxis. These hand signals vary based on the route taken. She gave me some tips on how to use these signals. And that was my first introduction to the taxi hand signals. You would think that that was the last time I got lost. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> I got lost many times after that. But in getting lost, I learned something. In getting lost, I learned to be aware of my environment. In getting lost, I learned to observe with clarity where I was from, where I was currently at, and where I was going to. Once in a while, I would board a taxi that took me to a destination that I've never been to before. This changed the fear of being lost to a quest for discovery. This gave me an opportunity to learn. I learned that there were many different ways to get to the same place. I learned that Johannesburg is a big place, but once you learn to connect the dots, it can give you the courage to navigate the city. The curiosity to find out how things work drove me to explore the minibus taxi problem. I decided to use design and technology to try and solve this problem. In Johannesburg, there are new people arriving in the city every day. And the majority of these people use minibus taxis. 
There are many variables that determine how minibus taxis operate in the city. Their patterns are random. They are not scheduled. A taxi might charge multiple uh, taxi fares based on the route taken and based on the distance. A taxi route might use multiple hand signals. A taxi might take a detour based on a commuter's request, if the route permits so. And some of these routes, they can be fragmented, therefore requiring a commuter to take multiple taxes. And of course, taxi drivers. <laughs> we all love them. <laughs> taxi drivers can change their route temporarily to try to beat the traffic or to try to dodge the traffic cops. As you can imagine, this may cause a lot of anxiety to someone who's new in the city, even for those who've been in the city for years. In trying to solve this problem, I looked at it in two phases. The first phase was to look at taxi ranks and their destinations. Um, the focus was in the Johannesburg CBD and the northern suburbs. A taxi selects a, uh, a taxi rank. Um, once they have selected a taxi rank, the commuter can set for their destination. When the destination has been selected, the application will show the following. It will show the taxi fare, it will show the hand signal, and it will show the route timeline. The route timeline displays a list of landmarks and popular stops. And these landmarks and popular stops use the language that regular commuters use within that route. A commuter can also search for the nearby taxi route or rank based on their current geolocation. The second phase was to focus on machine learning. This is Roger's stuff. This is work in progress. I realized that when I was building the application, it's easy just to build a list. Go to a taxi rank, get a list, get where taxis are going, put it in an app, point A to point B. But that's not sufficient. The thing is about this problem, it is a data problem. What I'm trying to do with this is to create a street smart taxi brain. I'm trying to, to design this application as if a human is controlling it, like a street smart survey person who uses taxis based on context, based on a particular time of day. Within this randomness, there are many variables still. So you have to understand exactly how this work and how you can teach a machine so that it can teach itself based on patterns that it's, 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 it's picking up. I'm quite excited about this solution because it has given me an opportunity to learn and apply machine learning. And I agree with Roger, it is the future. And I think as Africans we should start building our own solution, our own solutions with that kind of intelligence. And our problems are unique, and they need this kind of, uh, this kind of, of solutions. What I've done, I've started piloting how this machine learning model is going to work with some of the routes. I've created simulation models just to see, based on a particular rank, the flow of taxis at different times. That gives an intelligence of where you can connect with a taxi, with a particular taxi, based on a particular time. And I've also wanted to, to see how this can connect with contextual taxi ranks. 
Contextual tax ranks are temporal tax ranks that you find based on a particular time. Um, you'll find that you don't need to, to go to Bree or go to North. There's a, a tax straight to Cresta if you are in Rivonia as an example. Um, but only there's a, a certain window that you can get a taxi by. But if you don't understand that, you will still go to a taxi ring and that will take you time. So putting into context in terms of how taxes operate and adding that intelligence um, within. This is a hard problem. I love the challenge. I think when it's solved, it will make Johannesburg such an awesome place. Being lost happens every day to different people. It is scary and unsettling at times, but with it comes discovery. With it comes an opportunity, an opportunity to learn something new. One thing that I've learned in trying to solve this problem is this. This is not about technology. This is not about design. This is about the human connection. This is about the strangers I've met at taxi ranks. The people who have taught me how things work. Trying to create this solution is an extension of that human connection using technology, using design. But it's always about the people. The people who use taxes every day. The people who share my fears and anxieties. It's about helping them. I think we can always find comfort in being lost and embrace it. Because whenever we are lost, we're never lost for long. Discovery is always nearby. Thank you very much.